Okay, hello guys. I just wanted to do um, a really, really quick, well, maybe not that quick, but kind of quick tutorial on the new HFI stuff. This isn't going to be a perfect video. This is the first try. But uh, yeah, I kind of want to just like walk you through what to be thinking when you're setting this stuff up. Okay, so. Um, so yeah let's get to it and I'll kind of try and explain what I'm doing as I go so I'm gonna kind of point this down now so you won't get to see my beautiful face anymore sorry about my messy desk but basically there's not a lot you need to see it's just that here we've got a VESC here we've got uh, a motor okay and um, over here we have the VESC tool which is connected okay so the first thing you want to do um, when you want to get this stuff going is just do the, the normal setup um, so yeah whatever these values don't really matter I just want to run detection and this is automatically going to apply the detection here so it'll take a little bit to do this yeah so it's going to run through detection here and uh, uh, then when that's done then we'll start looking into some of this HFI stuff okay anyway so you can see I have a 17 micro Henry motor, 40 milli ohm winding resistance. These are just some old Raptor motors, um, and the suggested motor current's 40 amps. Okay, that all looks good. Um, so we'll go like this. We're gonna read the motor configuration that was just detected, and that's all applied here in the settings. Okay, and then the first thing we want to do here is just take the sensor mode, set it to HFI, and then write the motor settings. Um, and that's going to put us into HFI mode. This is the HFI tab. It's under FOC over here and HFI. Uh, so HFI samples, don't touch this number. Leave it at 16. It just works best there. There's three settings here, start voltage, run voltage, and max voltage. So start voltage, basically right just for just a moment, HFI runs at a higher voltage to detect like where the motor is to begin with and then afterwards it switch into a secondary mode at a lower voltage that will be much quieter so the more voltage you put here the louder hfi is going to run and not only is it louder that noise is also a vibration which is wasting energy and possibly generating heat in your motor so what you want to find is kind of that level like the lowest amount of voltage you can get away with and still get stable performance out of hfi so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the terminal because a lot of these commands aren't initialized yet. And um, um, we're going to measure the inductance. So this is measure inductance and then this is a duty cycle. So uh, it's on a scale from 0 to 1. Um, I'm doing 0 0.2, which is 20%. So I'm going to measure the inductance. And then you're going to get these numbers here. You don't really need to worry too much about these numbers. So, um, and then the other thing to note here is that I have an inductance, a measured inductance of 15 micro Henry. And then this LQ, LD, LQ difference, basically that's kind of the, as the motor spins, the inductance value changes. And that's what we're using. That's what HFI uses to locate where the motor is when, it, when you're at zero velocity. And so the bigger this difference is, the better it is for HFI. And the best way to look at this number is in comparison to what your total is. So if you look at this motor that I'm using here, you can see we have maybe 15% of the total inductance changes as the motor spins. So it's not a lot, but it's probably enough for HFI to work. If you get down to something like 5% of the total inductance or something, HFI might not start not be working so well. So the first thing we wanna do now is we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna hit, um, that's it right there, FOC plot HFI enable. And we want, the DFT plot so FOC H and then we want to put a one at the end here okay so you click this right and now we're gonna go over here into real-time data we're gonna click the experiment tab okay and so that is gonna show us the this whole stuff okay the first thing we want to do is unclick three through six so we only care about this one the first plot and the second plot the first plot is the phase that the HFI is estimating and the second phase is this phase bin two Basically that, there's two values, like I said, there's a start value and then a, a value once it's running. The red plot is gonna be like what it sees when it's first starting. And it's using this measurement that's less accurate at low amplitude, but more consistent. 
and so you want to run at high amplitude to get this first red measurement and then it's going to switch over to the blue measurement and decrease amplitude once it's running okay so um, the easiest way to get HFI to start plotting is just to have the motor brake so we're already in HFI mode right now and you can see if we just hit the brakes oh yeah we want to unclick lines and click these dots up here by the way because it just makes it easier to see and now you can see sorry about the incredibly loud and annoying noise but you can see that I'm plotting um, my motor phase. So I'm here spinning the motor, and then I'm here spinning the motor, and then up on the screen, you can see that this blue line is the motor phase. Sorry if that's super loud, by the way. Um, okay, but I'm gonna stop this because it's annoying. So this blue line is the motor phase, and then the red would be like the initial um, detection, so to speak. So you can see that uh, the blue is tracking well and the red is just all over the place. And the reason for that is, as I said, um, the, the amplitude is quite low. So we were basically right there, we were running, right? And we were running at this run voltage, which is four volts. Okay, and at four volts, if we look at our plot, you can see that this red thing is very terrible. So the first thing we want to find is what is the minimum voltage that would allow us to see something good from the red, right? So to see something accurate with the red measurement. So let's decrease all of these to eight volts. Okay, so right now it doesn't matter what's happening. Whenever HFI is running, it's running at eight volts because these are the three points that are possible. So let's write this. And now when we go back, it's going to be even louder when we break. So I won't keep it for too long. Okay, and you can see, you can see that our red is still not dialed in. So we want to come back here and let's increase that. Let's try something like 12 volts and see what happens then. Okay, so let's write these motor settings and then we'll go back to real time data and let's break again. Now it's quite loud. You can see that, you can see that slowly our red is starting to dial in on what our true motor position is. And you want to spin this around too because it gets a little different depending on where you are in rotation. So let's spin it a bit. Yeah, so you can see, depending on where I'm at, I get different amounts of noise. Um, but I would say that this is still a bit noisy. We'd like that line to have a bit less, this line should have a little bit less spread in it, okay? So um, let me just make sure I'm still recording, I am. So that we want that line to have a little less spread in it. So let's let's keep bumping this up. Let's say, let's do 16 volts. We'll just go in four volt intervals, okay? Um, so let's write these settings. And then let's go here and now we'll break again. And that is deafeningly loud. But I would say probably 16 volts looks pretty good. That red line's pretty tight, but um, let's just see what happens if we go to 20. And by the way, when you're doing this, do not leave this running forever. Um, because it will start to heat up your motor. There's current vibrating in your motor and it is um, burning energy. So you don't want this to run at 20 volts or whatever volts you pick endlessly. And when you're doing this, start low and work your way up. And as soon as you hit it dialed in, stop, okay? Okay, let's go back to real time data and then let's break again. Yeah, okay, that was deafeningly loud, but you can see we're really that those extra four volts did pay dividends. And the important thing to remember is that this voltage is almost never running. So you don't even really hear it. So don't be afraid to set it high, but don't just set it, uh, don't just set it arbitrarily high because other funny stuff will start happening. So you don't want to set it higher than you need. So do this, step it up slowly, and then figure out what you need. And then once you have it, this voltage that we just found out is the start voltage. So leave that at 20 volts, perfect. Okay, next up, is the uh, run voltage, okay? So this is the voltage that is used when you are just not putting any motor amps in and just sitting still. So basically the HFI scales from your max motor amps to zero. So it'll start at two volts and then it will end at whatever this max voltage is. For now, we just wanna see what the minimum voltage is required to kind of see what's going on if no current, no other current in the motor is being applied, okay? So let's write, let's write two volts. Let's see what that looks like, okay? In the real-time data. 
So you can see here at 20 volts, the blue signal, which is the, so let's, let's get rid of this red. We don't need to see it anymore. We don't care. It's just noise. So now we can do this. Um, and you can see that at two volts, I kind of, I, it's kind of working, right? Like you can kind of see the phase, but it's not really, it's not really looking that good. Now let's do something else. This is mo mounted to the table. Please don't do this on a motor that's floating, but I'm going to apply um, a current. Okay, and the best way to do that is to hit this uh, mouse key buttons. That way it's quick and easy to release if you need to apply current. So now I'm, I have, I'm hovering over the arrow keys on my keyboard, you maybe can't quite see, but if you hit the up and down arrows, that applies a current. If you hit the right and left arrows, that applies a duty cycle. So only use the up and down arrows for this. Okay, but so this is gonna apply three amps. And we can feel that, um, you know, it's jerking all over the place. It doesn't really feel consistent. That's not really working very good. It's a bit noisy. So let's go back over here and let's increase the voltage to say four volts. Let's just go up in two volt steps. You might want to go in one volt steps. It really depends on your motor. This motor has kind of high inductance and high resistance. And that means that um, it will need slightly higher values for this to work correctly. Uh, okay, so I wrote my motor commands. And again, I'm going to try it again. Now you can see at four volts, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty, it's tracking quite well with my hand as I move my hand. Um, and so I'm gonna say four volts looks pretty good. That's the default value. The funny thing is these motors work perfectly with default values, but there's gonna be plenty of motors that don't, so you'll need to go through this process. But you can see, I can kind of test it every time. I can test it every time and it always is starting smoothly and in the same direction. That's the number one thing you wanna think about. So now let's increase this. So right now, right, we have both values set to four volts. Let's increase, and, and by the way, guys, if you're gonna do this, be very careful, please be, be as careful as you can, but let's increase this to say 20 amps. So that'd be like half of my maximum current that I'm gonna be running, right? Uh, so you could really hurt yourself. So if you're gonna do this, just you know, wear gloves or something and, and be safe you know, make intelligent choices for yourself. But see, when I hit 20 amps here, you can see that this measurement starts to get a little weird. And then you see that the motor every once in a while is flipping back and forth. It's getting confused. Because basically, um, there's kind of some crosstalk between this signal and that uh, is causing some weird things to happen. Um, and again, I would advise you not to do what I'm doing. You can go out and ride your board instead and set these things from the phone app. That's probably maybe safer. I don't know. Be careful. Uh, I'm going to set this to 10 volts instead. Okay. And if you maybe, it's hard to see now because the plots become quite noisy, but basically it's, it's jumping. It's not getting good detection. Let's see what happens if we, if we set this to 10 volts instead, which is again, the default value. But now you can see that uh, no matter where I am and when I'm moving this around, when I'm moving this around really slowly like this, they're different. Because the thing is, there's gonna be places in the commutation where it loses track, and that's where you run into problems. So at 10 volts, I'm not getting any places in the commutation where I'm losing where I'm losing track. And you might want to even then test, you know, up to higher amps, but I'm not comfortable holding that with my hand. 20 amps is about the max I can handle. So overall, you can see we, we looked at these plots and stuff, and now we have this motor all dialed in. And yeah, it looks great. So um, that's how it works. You can see it only makes the noise right at the beginning, which is good. Right now, this HFI sounds a lot louder than it sounds like on a skateboard because it's mounted to a, a resonant board on a desk, which is also resonant. So the whole thing is, is buzzing like crazy and these motors in particular are loud. So, so yeah, but um, it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, thank you for um, you know, watching my shitty video and uh, I hope that this helps somebody and hopefully soon we will have a, a wizard developed that will just like do this stuff automatically but for now you get to enjoy and learn a little bit maybe uh, okay thanks